right, so what is the pit count? So every other year, um, HUD mandates that every continuum of care, uh, for us, that's our county, go out and physically count how many people we have living on the streets. And we do a little bit above and beyond just what's mandated by HUD. We actually do an interview and record important data about who is homeless, why they're homeless, what kind of barriers they're facing. So it's uh, the data we collect in this event is very important. Uh, it also, it helps us to understand everything that people are going through so that we can provide the best services and support and see where they're maybe lacking. And very important, it's gonna, the number of people that are counted um, is going to get determine how much funding we receive for the next two years from the federal government. So uh, what we do in here is we break down our county into the four main biggest cities and we do the count in a different city on each day. So January 25th, 6 a.m. in Manteca, everyone will meet. If you're, uh, if you're going to be counting in Manteca, you'll meet at the Manteca City Hall. January 26th, Lodi meets at 7 a.m., at Gravity Church. January 27th in Tracy, 6 a.m. at the Community Center. And January 31st, Stockton, 6 a.m. We have two command centers. We're breaking Stockton into North and South. Uh, North Stockton will meet at the Alliance Church and South Stockton will meet at the Civic Auditorium. We will be uh, sending out an email with all the information. So you're gonna know exactly where you're supposed to go, what time, you're gonna get all the information, you're gonna get a copy of all these slides, everything you need is gonna be coming in an email after this uh, meeting today. So in order to volunteer, we require that you meet all of the following criteria. You have to be 18 years or older. So please, this is not the opportunity to bring your um, children with you, not this time. When you arrive on the day of the count, you'll be asked to sign a waiver. Although it's not required, we're really encouraging everyone to attend one of these training sessions. So thank you very much. You've met that requirement. We, um, we're gonna need you to be available for approximately three to four hours. It's really hard to say exactly how long it's gonna take, but the more volunteers we have, the quicker we'll get done. We are requiring that everybody wear PPE, so masks, um, we just, whether you're indoors or outdoors, doesn't matter the entire time. We, if we need to make sure everyone is kept safe, especially amid the surge that we're having right now. If you're unable to wear a mask for whatever reason, um, we want to thank you for wanting to participate, but we're going to have to ask you to sit this one out. Um, we're just trying to stay, keep everyone as safe as possible. When you arrive on the day of the count, before you enter the building, the first thing you'll do is go through the screening and temperature check. I'm sure you're all familiar with those questions that we get asked. And we also, it's really important that if you've been sick or had any signs of COVID in the last couple of weeks before the count, please stay home. Again, everyone's safety is our priority. So in order to prepare for this uh, point in time count, we have been working, meeting every single week since August. We've been meeting with every, Nonprofit, law enforcement agency, volunteers, uh, outreach workers, you name it, city officials. We put a lot of work into making sure that this runs smoothly. We've also done things a little differently this year, meaning we have put together a toolkit so that in future pit counts, we'll have the foundation for everything we've worked on so hard. So we won't have to start from scratch every time. This, so we're really hoping this is going to be beneficial to the whole community for many years in the future. We have been recruiting volunteers for many weeks uh, through social media, emails, word of mouth, everything you can think of. We have, uh, Zulema, are we up over 400 volunteers right now? Yes, we yeah. are at 450. 450, 450 that's amazing. That's As amazing. Today, so, 450, so. and they'll be coming in up until the day before. So. Um, please continue to spread the word. We still need as much as many volunteers as we can we can get. Definitely. So if you have any family or friends that tell them to, there's lots of ways to sign up, but the easiest way, in my opinion, is text the word PIT to 40403. And once again, all this information will be sent to you again uh, shortly after the meeting. Uh, we have, um, oh, we've also been conduct, uh, in contact with Maggie Park. She's in charge of public health for our county and lots of medical professionals and CDC guidance. And we're just doing everything we can to stay on top of the COVID outbreak and make sure that 
everything goes smoothly and everyone stays safe. So this is important. We want you to know who not to count, who not to survey on the day of the count. So we do not count people staying in shelters. The first question that you're gonna ask at the beginning of the survey is where did you sleep last night? If their answer is at a shelter, a warming center, a friend's house, someone's couch, those people are not counted in this count. There is a sheltered homeless count that is conducted separately, but what we are out there doing is an unsheltered count. So that first question is very important and the survey itself will provide guidance as to what kind of answers um, we are looking for. Also, if you see a tent, don't mark that down as a person unless you actually see a human. So we're not counting empty tents, we're just counting people. We're gonna use two different tools to conduct the survey. The first one, the general survey, is the main one you're gonna use most of the time for anyone who's willing and able to answer your questions. For anyone that's unwilling or unable to answer your questions, we have an observation tool. Both of these surveys are available on paper and on the internet. So you can use your phone and we'll get to that in just a moment, uh, how you can prepare before the count by bookmarking the website. That it's an online form that you'll use. And we're encouraging anyone who's able to use the online tool. It makes data a lot cleaner, makes, um, makes it a lot easier for everybody involved on the back end too, um, as well as for you. Um, it's a lot easier for you, but sometimes there's no wireless signals, sometimes people just are not comfortable using technology, that's fine. Everyone will have paper copies of the surveys as well. So step-by-step -step guide to conducting interviews. When you're out in the field, you're in an encampment, you approach somebody, you introduce yourself and explain why you're there. The blue box on the bottom of the screen uh, has a script you're welcome to read from. It's gonna be at the top of your surveys as well. So you can read from it or you can speak naturally. It's completely whatever you're comfortable with. We want you to keep in mind, don't sneak up on people, announce your presence. When you're walking through an encampment, what I like to do is holler out, outreach, anybody home? Use in a tone of voice that's approachable, be polite. Um, so once you've introduced yourself and explained what you're doing, if the person consents to answering your questions, go on and continue with the interview. If they don't wanna answer your questions, thank them for their time, and then you would use the observation tool. So the, the general survey, the main survey tool that you're gonna use. This one will be used for anybody whose answer to the question, where did you sleep last night, is in an encampment, on the streets, in a park, in a tent, car, truck, RV, abandoned building, any place that is not meant for people to live in. Sometimes you'll approach somebody and it's a couple, a husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, and they were together. Their answers are probably gonna be the same for each survey, but you still have to only complete one survey per person. Remember that you're asking sensitive questions. So just to keep that in mind and be respectful. Remind the people that you're interviewing that they have the right to refuse to answer any questions. They don't have to answer anything they don't feel comfortable an answering. But we do ask that you ask all the questions on the survey. Try not to lead anyone's answers. So when it comes to gender, a good way to ask is what gender do you identify as? Try not to ask questions in a way that leads them as in you're male, right? When you're done with the survey, thank them for their time. And this is the most important. Please take your time. If you're using the paper survey, make sure that your writing is clear and, and we can read it. Um, I did a lot of the data entry for the last point in time count, and there were many surveys that we had to throw away because we couldn't read them. And that's it. Why put all the work in if we're not going to be able to use the information, right? So please take your time, make sure your writing is legible. This is a screenshot of what the paper survey looks like. Uh, in between the two highlighted sections at the top, there's that script I mentioned. You're welcome to read from it, refer to it, ignore it completely. That's up to you. The second highlighted part of, at the top, where did you sleep last night? Again, that's where it's gonna, if the street, park, under a bridge, by the river, these are the things that are kind of answers where you're gonna continue with the survey. The survey continues on the back side of the page. So when, you're got, when you get to the bottom of this page, don't forget to flip it over and finish asking the rest of the questions. At the highlighted area that says observation tool, that's when you would stop. So the observation tool is used when you can't and uh, complete a survey for different reasons. Maybe the person just said they didn't want to answer the questions. That's fine, you can use the survey tool. Maybe the person is asleep and you don't wanna wake them up. 
maybe you see somebody on the other side of the river and you can't safely get to them. Those are examples of when you would use the observation tool. With either survey, when you're using the paper form and not the mobile version, it's important that you record as much detail as possible about where you are. We need to know not only who the homeless are, but where they are. So Linda, don't just say, yes. I'm sorry for interrupting. I, I had someone email me that um, they're waiting to be let in. I just um, let someone in as soon as it popped up. I think it was Nancy. Um, there's nobody, I let someone in. Oh, sorry, there we go. Thank you, Zalima. Awesome, you're welcome, Linda, thank you. Welcome, Nancy, sorry it took so long to let you in. <laughs> All right, so it's, I was saying that it's important to be really specific about where you are when you're using the observation tool or the survey tool. So instead of just saying downtown Stockton, be specific. For example, under the Highway 4 overpass at the Wilson Way exit in Stockton across from the Metro PCS store. Don't just say downtown Tracy, say at the railroad tracks near Central and 4th Street in Tracy near the transit center. Be specific. And again, if you're using your cell phone to do the surveys, you just click the GPS button. Much simpler. So on the reverse side of the survey, on the paper survey, at the bottom, I went the wrong way, <laughs> that way, where it says observation tool, that is where you will complete, those are the questions you'll complete if you're unable uh, to answer the questions or to interview the person. I'll give you guys just a few seconds to, if you are able to get your phone out and scan the QR code on your screen, this will take you to the survey, the general survey. It is an online form. And in the slide after this, we'll walk you through the steps to take to bookmark it on your home screen. And um, if you're able to do this ahead of time before the day of the count, it's gonna make everything run quicker and smoother. If you're not able to, that's fine. We're gonna help you on the day of to get this up and running on your phone if, you're, if you wanna use it. Okay, and the next QR code is for the observation tool. Again, observation tools when you cannot complete a survey. I'll give you just a few seconds to scan that if you want. And just a reminder, these codes, every, all this information will be sent in an email afterwards. So don't worry if, if I'm going too fast for you right now. This is a video recorded by Adam Cheshire. Um, he works for the county and he, um, he's gonna explain to you about using the online version. Using the point in time count mobile survey. The purpose of the survey is to gather information about those experiencing homelessness at one point in time. The information will be used to determine how the county and cities can target available resources to lift people out of homelessness permanently. Each survey can be accessed by a separate link. One survey is for in-person interviews when an individual agrees to speak with you. The other is used to record data by observation if you are unable to conduct an interview. Follow these instructions to save both links as shortcuts on the home screen of your mobile device so you can quickly access either survey as needed. The instructions will vary depending on the type of device that you are using. If you own an Apple iPhone, please be sure your phone is updated to version 15.2. We'll save this page as a shortcut to our home screen. For iPhones, select the Share button at the bottom of the screen and click the Add to Home Screen button. For Android, select the menu in the top right corner and click Add to Home Screen. Feel free to name it anything you want. Then, tap the Add button to add it to your home screen. Once you have opened the link to the in-person survey, enter your assigned zone. Tap on Press to Set Location. On your device, Make sure to allow the site to use your current location when prompted. Tap the location on the map where you are conducting the interview. This will ensure that accurate data is collected about where the homeless are counted. Use the sample script when you are interviewing someone. Record as much information as you can about them in the questions listed. Enter any additional notes and then press Submit. If you are unable to speak with someone, perhaps because they are asleep or they refuse to be interviewed, you should use the observation survey instead in order to collect observable data about the individual, such as their gender and approximate age. 
We understand that you may be guessing as to this information, and that's okay. The important part is that the individual is counted so we can understand the number of individuals experiencing homelessness in San Joaquin County. On your device, make sure to allow the site to use your current location when prompted. This will ensure that accurate data is collected about where the homeless are counted. Do your best to answer the questions in the observation survey about the individual. Again, your best guess here is fine. Understanding how many people are experiencing homelessness in San Joaquin County and where they were observed is the most important goal of the point in time count. Enter any additional notes and then press submit. Now we're going to talk about safety while you're in the encampments. So it's really important that you always stay within view of your group. Don't move on without the rest of your group. Just even if you're done with the survey and you see someone farther down the row, just give everyone else time to finish up and move together as a group. We don't want anyone to get hurt or anything bad to happen or we don't want to leave you behind. Keep an appropriate conversational distance when you're interviewing. We would like to say social distancing of six feet, but in reality, it's going to be difficult to hear the answers people are telling you when you're both wearing masks and you're underneath the freeway. So just keep, uh, keep an appropriate distance. Maintain awareness of the space around you, where others are, ways to get in and out of the space you're in. Keep an eye on, be aware if there's a slope in the ground that you're standing on. We don't want anyone to trip or fall or get hurt. Remain standing. If you need to squat down to speak to someone, that's fine, but try to always maintain your balance. Prioritize your own safety first. If you don't feel safe approaching someone or going to a particular place, don't go. The most important thing is to keep you safe. Go to your team lead regarding any questions or concerns. If someone asks you for a particular resource or help with something, every group will be assigned a team lead who is a professional outreach worker. They're experienced, they, are, they know what to do, they know where the resources are. We don't want anyone making promises that they can't keep. We don't want, um, we're, we're out there to do one, one purpose, which is the, the point in time count. So anything else, please direct them to your team leads. They will be able to provide the help and resources and address any concerns that come up. In case of an incident that might jeopardize safety, go to your team lead or law enforcement immediately. All of the law enforcement agencies in our county, including all the police departments, the sheriff's department, Caltrans, they have all been on board with planning this whole point in time count and they have, um, they have assigned officers to every zone. So every city you're in uh, that we're doing a count in is gonna be broken up into zones and your team will be assigned a zone to Canvas. So there will be at least two law enforcement officers assigned to every zone. So no matter where you are, there will always be a law enforcement officer somewhere nearby. Do not transport anyone other than volunteers in your vehicle. If someone asks you for a ride somewhere, just explain to them that you're not able to do that um, and refer them to your team lead. Always wear your face mask. Carry extra masks and ask the people that you're interviewing to please wear one too. Please keep in mind that animals are not always friendly. Do not approach or pet any animals. You will see some very cute puppies when you're out there. Keep in mind your safety is our priority. And remember that you are in someone's home. It may not be the type of home that you would envision living in, but this is people's home. So treat people the way you would want a guest in your home to treat you. Now, most of the volunteers, we will need them to go out and conduct surveys. That is the whole purpose of the point in time count. We need 95% of our volunteers of all those 450 plus people out in the field doing these surveys and uh, handing out incentives, which we will provide. However, if you want to volunteer, but maybe you have physical mobility issues or for whatever reason you can't go out into the encampments, we do have some positions in the command center uh, available for volunteers, things like hospitality, volunteer registration, setup, cleanup. So um, we have a place for everyone who wants to help. On the day of the count, if you have a vehicle, it's a good idea to bring your vehicle. Um, bring a small backpack or tote bag if you have one. You'll have items to carry with you, surveys, papers, pens, clipboard, uh, incentive items, sanitizer, gloves, lots of things. So it'll be very helpful if you bring something to carry all your items in. Keep in mind where you will be going and wear sturdy, comfortable, appropriate shoes, preferably boots, preferably waterproof, no open toes. Please don't come in Crocs or sandals. 
Um, it may be, it, you're gonna be walking around in dirt. Sometimes if it's dry, the dirt is, is loose and slippery. Sometimes it, if it's raining, it can be muddy and wet. So just wear appropriate shoes. Please make sure that on the day of the count, your cell phone is fully charged. Whether or not you plan to use the online survey tool, we still need to be able to reach you and you need you to be able to reach us in case of an emergency or any questions that you have. So charge your phone, please. Wear comfortable clothing that's warm. It is January and it is early in the morning and it will be cold. However, in 2019, when I went out to count on the point in time count, I really wished I had worn layers because within about 45 minutes walking around, I got pretty hot. So it's a good idea to wear layers. Don't wear loose flowy clothes that might snag on things. Uh, this is a jeans and t-shirt kind of, kind of event. We will be providing snacks and coffee in the morning for the volunteers. We will give everybody a safety vest. We'll provide all the masks and gloves and all the PPE that you need. We'll provide you with clipboards, pens, and the items to give away to the people you're interviewing. This is a sample itinerary for the day of the count. Again, this is only an example. Uh, for Lodi, they are starting at 7 a.m., not 6 a.m., so please don't take this as uh, set in stone, but this is just to give you an idea of what will happen when you show up. So if you're assigned to 6 a.m., you'll report to the command center. You'll go through the COVID screening questions and temperature check. You'll sign in at the registration table and sign your waiver. We'll hand you all the things that you need, all your safety gear and supplies, and you'll be assigned to a team with a team lead. You'll introduce yourself to your team lead and your teammates, and we'll have a quick Q&A huddle welcome speech with some a few different people, outreach workers and law enforcement, maybe a few minutes long, and then you'll head on out to the assigned zone that you're to Canvas. When you're done conducting all the surveys, uh, return to the command center and turn the, in all your items that you have left over and just a quick thank you and debriefing. Uh, uh, something I forgot to mention earlier, when you're in the encampments and you're using the paper surveys, when, you're, when you complete a survey, immediately go back and hand it to your team lead. Your team lead will look it over for, complete, for completeness and legibility, and your team lead will be the one responsible for collecting and handing in those surveys to us at the command center. Thank you very much. We appreciate all your help and, and it's gonna take the whole community pitching in to get this done and it's super important. Again, if you have anyone who wants to volunteer, have them text the word PIT to 40403.